This tutorial looks at an industrial process called the Haber process. It's a process which is used for making an important industrial chemical called ammonia. We'll be learning that the reaction in the Haber process is a reversible reaction which reaches a balance called an equilibrium. The raw materials for this process are nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. And this reaction is reversible, that means that reaction can go in both directions. Nitrogen and hydrogen can react to make ammonia, and also ammonia can break down to make nitrogen and hydrogen again. At the bottom of the picture we've got uh, two molecules of ammonia, and it's as if we could break the bonds in the ammonia that's been made, like so. And then once we've broken those, we would be remaking the original nitrogen and hydrogen molecules. Similarly, they could then recombine to make ammonia and on and on. So this reversible reaction can go both ways. It has this special symbol, double-headed arrow. We can use an analogy to try and understand reversible reactions. A one-way reaction would be that all the people in London travel to Nottingham. But in a reversible reaction, some of the people from Nottingham travel to London at the same speed as other people travel from London to Nottingham. So long as the rate of travel is the same on both sides of the motorway here, the number of people in Nottingham and the number of people in London shouldn't change. And there will always be people in London and people in Nottingham. That's very similar to the Haber process. At equilibrium, or after the reaction has been occurring for some time, the forward and reverse reactions are going at the same rate. And there's a balance between the amount of ammonia in the mixture and the amount of the unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen. For the process to happen economically, scientists have found the best conditions for the reaction. The conditions are things like the temperature and the pressure and whether or not a catalyst is used. You have to learn the conditions for the Haber process. A temperature of 450 degrees Celsius is used because it gives a fast rate of reaction. That's because the particles are moving faster and will collide more often and with more force, more successful collisions. A high pressure is used to create a fast rate of reaction as well. This forces the nitrogen and the hydrogen particles closer together, so they collide more frequently. A catalyst is used because a catalyst speeds up a chemical reaction, and the catalyst used is iron. And in order to save as much money as possible, the unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen are recycled once the ammonia has been removed from the mixture. Here's a flow diagram of the process. On the left we have the nitrogen which comes from the nitrogen gas in the air and the hydrogen which comes from natural gas. They're mixed together in the right proportions to react together, one of nitrogen to three volumes of hydrogen. They're then put into the reaction vessel. In the reaction vessel there's a temperature of 450 degrees, a high pressure of 200 atmospheres and a catalyst of iron. The nitrogen and the hydrogen react together to form some ammonia in the mixture. The mixture of gases, including the nitrogen and hydrogen, which are unreacted, are cooled down. The ammonia condenses into a liquid and is run off and collected. Any unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen are recycled back into the process to save money. This diagram taken from a textbook also shows the same process. Nitrogen and hydrogen are mixed together in the right proportions, put under pressure and pumped into the reaction vessel. Here. Beds of an iron catalyst are kept at a high temperature of 450 degrees and then the mixture of gases, which makes ammonia and some unreacted nitrogen and hydrogen, are passed over a cooling grid where the ammonia condenses into a liquid and is collected and run off. The unreacted gases are passed back through the pump into the reaction vessel again to save money. Here's a past paper question. Look at the equation. It shows the reaction to make ammonia. Write down the name of a compound in the equation. Well, here a compound is not an element. A compound is made up of two or more elements chemically combined together. The only compound here is the ammonia. 
It's made of nitrogen and hydrogen atoms joined together chemically. The number of atoms in one molecule of ammonia, well, there's one nitrogen and there's three hydrogens, so that makes four atoms. And this symbol means it is a reversible reaction. And there's the answers to that question. You could say that the reaction goes both ways, or the reaction reaches equilibrium. Next, we need to know the raw materials for the Haber process and where they come from, and also some of the uses of ammonia. Well, as said before, the hydrogen comes from the cracking of crude oil fractions, which you may remember from module C1. And it also can be made from natural gas by reacting with steam. The actual reactions below here, you don't need to know these. You just need to know that it comes from cracking of crude oil or from natural gas. Nitrogen is extracted from the air. It's actually done by a method of fractional distillation of liquid air. Uh, it's cooled down until all of the gases like oxygen and nitrogen are changed into liquids and then warmed slowly to allow them to evaporate at separate temperatures. Here's another exam question. It shows a flow chart for the manufacture of ammonia and it should be familiar to you by now. Raw material A, which is uh, where the nitrogen is extracted from, would be the air. The word equation for the reaction is given here. The reaction is reversible. What's meant by a reversible reaction? It's a reaction that can go in both directions. And there's the answer to that question. There are various other ways of saying that uh, second answer. And a final question. Look at the table. It shows the percentage yield of ammonia at different temperatures and pressures. How does increasing the temperature change the percentage yield? Well, if we look at changing the temperature, let's keep the pressure the same. So let's just look along one of these rows. So keeping the pressure at 400, if we increase the temperature from 200 to 400 to 600, we can see that the percentage yield is going down, it's decreasing. So our answer is, how does increasing the temperature change the percentage yield? It decreases. And finally, that's our answer from the Mark scheme. So why is ammonia such an important industrial chemical? Well, ammonia can be used as a raw material for making another chemical, nitric acid. And when that ammonia is reacted with nitric acid in a neutralization reaction, it makes the salt ammonium nitrate, which is a useful fertilizer because it can provide nitrogen into the soil. The ammonia could also be reacted with, say, sulfuric acid to make ammonium sulfate or with phosphoric acid to make ammonium phosphate, which are also useful fertilizers. And fertilizers are very important for world food production.